Uh, in this lecture, uh, I am going to discuss about few other types of defects in rotating systems like cracks, looseness, rubs. So far, we have discussed about uh, unbalance and uh, misalignment and then there are few more defects which can occur in rotating systems, one being the shaft having cracks or cracks developing in the shaft and particularly right now, I am discussing about cracks on the outside of the shaft by the way uh, i will pose you another problem here suppose i have a shaft and there was an internal crack okay so this internal crack uh, will also influence something we sometimes may not be able to visually see it, but then cracks which have shafts which have cracks on the outside with uh, very visual inspection, we can see it, but I will tell you in this lecture how through vibration monitoring we can detect such cracks and such cracks which are internal we will again talk about another technique on NDT and ultrasonics, where such internal cracks can be detected. And as you all know, these shafts carry many components like impellers, pulleys, gears. So, some of them can become loose. So, looseness of the system also will influence the vibrations. Another kind of related is rubs, like uh, some component is rubbing against a rotating shaft. So, they will generate lot of uh, vibration signature okay. and how we can detect these is what we are going to focus in this lecture. So, the shafts can be transverse or can be slant. or okay and so we will see um, the many methods how such shafts can be detected due to slant crack due to torsions due to bending etc we will see so in the laboratory again uh, the same machinery fault simulator wherein if you will see here, we have a shaft and this black disc is actually a disc which is used to load the shaft and the shaft is actually simulated with cracks. There are those two flanges and you know, aluminum flanges and if you will see there are these four bolts and if I remove all the four bolts, the two shafts will come apart and if I join them, the two shaft will be a formed into a single shaft. So, by loosening these bolts, I can simulate cracks in two shafts and this kind of experiments or simulations were done in our laboratory. And these two you will see are the signal conditioners being used for the accelerometer and the signals were eventually picked up in a data logger, wherein we can store the data. The reason is today a uh, lot of numerical techniques also exist what is known as by the method of finite element method. People have analyzed rotor bearing systems with crack present and 
done <coughs> I mean they have done for rotor bearing system which is of importance to us they are done for beams and columns having cracks it is this response which we measure from such systems and the characteristics of this response gives us a clue as to how bad or how good the shaft is in terms of crack. Now, physically what happens? If there is a crack in a system, all of you can realize that the stiffness of the system would change. If system changes, what happens? In, as you know, omega n is root over k by m. So, if the system stiffness changes, the natural frequency would change and that would mean the eigen from an eigen value analysis, we can do that. Another is, if a system's property has changed, I can measure its impedance. What is this impedance? It is nothing but forced by velocity. Okay. So, for a system, I can give a known force f, I can measure the response v. Okay. Obviously, for a rotating shaft, this has to be done on the bearing housing. Okay. So, about two decades ago, you know, we did this research at IIT Khadapur in our laboratory, wherein we measured the mobility okay, of this shaft crack. So, let me explain you what this is here. This is a shaft where we artificially made a crack and then we have measured the mobility. So, if you look at the experimental setup here of the motor coupling a shaft with a disc and we introduced a crack here at some distance and uh, we are giving a force through a electromagnetic exciter and then uh, we are measuring the response with an impedance head. But the, I, I talked about uh, the accelerometers, but then there are also piezoelectric devices which can be used to measure the force. So, these are known as force transducers and there are devices known as impedance heads, where we can measure simultaneously force and vibration or acceleration and I can measure the impedance. Okay. Once I have the acceleration in terms of acceleration, velocity as you know is A by omega. So, I can find out the velocity and impedance is F by V or mobility is V by F inverse of So, in such a system, we ran the system at different speeds and we measure the crack depth ratio this is the soft diameter d sum a. So, alpha is nothing but a by d. Okay, for such crack depth ratio, uh, this has been normalized, we measured the change in the mobility and this was uh, uh, published in 2002, yeah, almost more than uh, one and a half decades now. Uh, it was a very popular work which we had done then and still being followed by many researchers throughout the world. So, you see the variations in the mobility ratio 
the change in the mobility to the original mobility with different crack radiuses okay at two different speeds you can see that right 20 degree at 40 degree and so on okay and this gives an idea as to if a crack has occurred so a system which is running and uh, initially in cbm if you had taken the care to measure m0 new system so at periodically if you measure m alpha at any given instance of course it requires certain extra in instrumentation for measuring force and the velocity so you can do m alpha and then plot so at whenever the crack depth has increased considerably the effect is large but you know we cannot afford to have a very high crack depth because the system strength would have reduced significantly otherwise uh, there are cases wherein cracks have occurred in shafting systems and then they fail another failure occurs because of the torsional variations particularly in many of the torsional failures many of the rotating systems because fluctuating power supply leads to the variation of the speed on top of it if there is a crack this will lead to an immediate uh, failure of the system so one has to safeguard and you must keep in mind in cbm or machinery health monitoring or condition monitoring that one incipient fault if goes undetected it will lead to few other faults and then you will try to be lost in finding out the reason behind such incipient fault or what actually caused the real failure okay so one has to be uh, be careful and nowadays in condition monitoring research throughout the world people are finding out methods by which they can find out incipient fault be it in bearings be it in gears be it in shafts and that is the thrust area today so this rotor system with transverse crack was modeled by finite element methods and this is that normalized uh, i mean distance a so alpha is a by d or a prime a bar is a by d and so on so this could be modeled in the techniques of finite element method and then for a transverse crack some of the breathing modes are there it will change with the rotation of the shaft and this cracks will open and close depending on what position they are so these kind of signature will lead to the changing in the eigen frequencies of the crack because i was telling you the natural frequency would change because of this factor k by m so for the present case or for the example which i showed you uh, this is for somebody those who are doing research in this area those uh, faculty members or students who are attending this course and would like to know more about this they can refer to our paper which happened in 2002 in journal of acoustical society of america and uh, these are some of the examples in the laboratory we took a shaft of 2 cm diameter length 50 cm of a steel shaft uh, we had a disc mid span and the crack location was varied and the crack depth alpha bar was varied and the bearing stiffness was assumed to be constant force was of 15 newton for a duration of 0.1 seconds and then we varied the operating speed and found out the 
um, eigenvalues, uh, eigenfrequency and so on. But uh, one comparison I must give you between the transverse crack and slant crack and what is the phenomena because of the opening and closing effect on the eigenfrequencies, steady state response, transient response and response to impulse. So, crack beads with a frequency equal to the rotation shift and slant crack breathes with a frequency equal to the torsional excitation omega t. Eigen value is reduced due to crack significantly, but reduction in Eigen value due to crack is relatively less in the case of slant crack. And most important is the steady state response shows the characteristic features of 1x, 2x, 3x components of the frequency equal to the rotor of uh, rotor speed, whereas in the case of slant cracks we will see sub and super harmonic frequencies. So, you will see fractional frequencies of some fraction of 1 x and so on in this spectrum. Now, in transient you know as opposed to if you recall again just this these classes sometimes I, I recall whatever I would have studied uh, or taught you earlier in terms of signal analysis. Broadly, we can classify signal as stationary and non stationary. So, stationary signals occur during steady state because they are constant frequencies, there is no speed change. Constant speed is a better word to use and this happens in the case of transients. Like you have just started up the machine, if you start up a machine it is known as run up or coast up. If you are shutting down it is run down or coast down. So, from one speed you decelerate to come to rest or from a rest you go up to a particular speed. So, this transients will occur and you can very well detect if there is transients. So, non stationary methods of FFT etcetera will not work we have to use transient and there is a signal processing technique called wavelets which can be used or STFT of course, or EMD etcetera. These are some of the non stationary signal analysis which can be used very easily and effectively to find out such occurs on uh, cracks. So, viruses of cracked rotor are compared until the sp speed does not pass the critical speed subharmonics are there in the transient response and so on. So, if the soft has a crack there will be a lot of subharmonics okay, in the time domain and there will be an envelope and so on some v t and this can be only found in continuous wavelet transform etcetera. Okay. So, those who are interested to study more about cracks in rotating systems can refer to uh, many of my papers again which will be available in uh, Google scholar or at my website. Now, with that kind of a background on cracks shafts, I will give you some telltale signs of what happens if the components are loose in a system. Okay. Now, what happens if components are loose in a system, they will hit and so the amplitude of the signal and will be very, very high. It will be so high, one reason is the data acquisition system has a limit to how much it can take. So, these are these are responsible for clipped vibration 
signals or what are known as truncated vibration signals. So, these kind of truncations will give rise to what is known as clipped waveform and if you do an FFT of these clipped waveform which has been created because of looseness, you will see lot of subharmonics and these are subharmonics. Subharmonics I mean 1 by 3 x, 1 by 5 x etcetera. Okay. where x is the rotational speed. So, amplitude variation truncations contains harmonics and subharmonics contain beat and un unstable phase between signals they are very erratic. So, if I have a bearing component or a race loose on a housing it will be hitting against each other. So, a lot of impacts hits will occur give rise to truncated signals and unstable phase and from a noise analysis you will see a lot of noisy hits and sometimes what happens because of this they will excite because they excite high resonant frequencies of connected systems. So, that can occur also occur, but another problem which we will come across is known as rubs. See rubs so happens for example, if I have a shaft particularly this has lot of effect for example, if I have a rotor of a motor inside a stator. this is the rotor, this is the stator of a motor. So, basically one is a creates a magnetic field and this air gaps are very they have to be uniform air gap that gives the magnetic reluctance and then the rotor moves because of the magnetic field that is a different story. But imagine if these bearings which are holding them have a large radial clearance. So, what is going to happen? It may happen this may drop down. So, there will be a strong contact, contact while rotating. So, this is a rub. So, as if something is rotating and then you are pressing onto it. Okay. So, this will generate what is known as high frequency excitations or also some squeaking noise, squeaking or streaking noise. It may so happen because of such rubs eventually this coil can get shortened, coil can there be heat generation, okay. short circuit. heat generation because of rub and eventually 
damage, it could be structural damage. Imagine you know you are talking about a large turbine with many sets of blades and veins. So, lack of space I have not drawn all of them in that direction. Imagine if this touches the casing, because there is a radial plane. So, usually in such systems these shafts are actually held in very proper rigid frame or stays. So, stays are there, but if there is a radial play it will touch against each other rubs etcetera. So, this is very similar to your looseness and so on and this can be very easily detected by signal processing technique called wavelets. Okay. So, wavelets happen gives rise to time varying or oh sorry frequency varying time signals. So, this calls for non stationary signal analysis to find out the faults in such systems. And if it was a once per rotation content, you can see the impact once per revolutions and so on. And while we talked about stroboscopes, I had given you an example how detection of looseness can be done using stroboscope if an engine accessories belt is slipping etcetera and noise analysis can be used to find out defects. So, analysis of impact or rub vibration signals are non stationary in nature, conventional FFT is not appropriate non stationary signal analysis like STFT or wavelets need to be used. So, sometimes wrong interpretation of rub and looseness signals people you know call them as uh, unbalanced and misalignment, because no everybody does not have access to non stationary uh, signal analysis tools. So, be it signal processing or be it analyzer. So, this can happen in the industry. Uh, nevertheless, uh, they are non stationary and we have to use certain advanced signal processing techniques like wavelets and of course, recently uh, our group has uh, found out the technique of empirical mode decomposition to analyze uh, non stationary signals and this can be used for finding out faults like rubs or looseness in systems or in fact cracks as well. Okay. Thank you.